Hey guys, Aiden the best on our live here today. I'm joined by Emily, the little night wolf, and Jacob Butter. Well met, lords and ladies. Hey everyone. <laughs> I thought you were gonna try that little Cubs intro again, but um, all right. Nope. Anyways, um, on to this. Today we are reviewing Sunset Paradise, episode seven. What comes next? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, Aiden, how about you start? Um, I like this episode. I don't think it's bad, but it does feel cliche at some points. Uh, the act to break up, mostly. Yeah, I was going to say that, considering what you said to me last time, it was like, oh, I'm so worried that suddenly you're going to start not liking the series because of something. Well, I'm not at that point yet, but... This definitely took a nosedive, I must say, from one episode to the next. It's like, jeez, what happened? Um, the next few episodes should be a lot better for you. You're gonna like the next last few. Okay, good, because it was like going from episode one of Glamwood Academy to episode two of Glamwood Academy. Oh, why? Glamwood suck in between about. episodes? <laughs> it wasn't even in between episodes, it was just one to the next. Oh. Oh, I did not realize that. So yeah, um, the basic plot of this episode is basically Benedict tries to get into the the Port Aurora, Port Aurora lighthouse. So yeah, evil plans, you know, and so I get that Phoenix egg to become human again. And then uh -huh. Maggie and Ori survived by the power of vacuum cleaner. And yes, I did like that though. That was that was still funny. I feel like again, it's uh, it's almost like. It's almost like the same kind of gag, the kind of like gag humor that drives the plot from early Dragon Ball and stuff. I've compared this to Toriyama before, but I feel like that's that energy still, still resonates a couple of times. Yeah, it's I, supposed to be getting more intense now, but yeah. Like I think this was a good episode, but I could see how it's definitely weak in some regards. Like the Megi plot is the least interesting one. I thought there were pl plenty of funny moments with the whole Benedict plot and like the way he tried to get into the lighthouse and what he did with the children. I thought that was actually pretty well executed, well, you know. Yeah, which by the way, we should probably explain that. So during uh, during the, one of the first bits, we have um, we have an old, for some reason, Scottish lighthouse keeper. Um, that <laughs> listen, listen, that, that Jacob. That... All you have to do yeah. to make a character funny is to give them a, a different accent. I mean, that's part of it, certainly. Anyway, the point is that, yes, this is, a, you know, we have an old Scottish and also funny lighthouse keeper that, um, that not only remembers Benedict from, from when he was a wee lad and, uh, yeah. and, for, and for the previous Phoenix Festival, but also is in charge of this lighthouse that any, uh, any, and he knows that he's not, from when Benedict Musgraves is the new sheriff, basically, he realizes that, oh yeah, this can't be the right guy because he's not got a pure heart and therefore cannot pass the lighthouse barrier that protects the phoenix that is inside. I hope yeah. that all basically made sense. And uh, what what doesn't make sense, however, is the fact that for some reason, the um, even though the barrier is supposed to select people from who have pure hearts and always include the other ones just holding up a few children who you have recently kidnapped and using them will somehow break the barrier down for long enough to them for them all to enter like all the, the goonies as well yeah. I, I'm, I'm surprised they, they haven't made like a reference to the, to the goonies movie yes that's another side note oh yeah, yeah no i don't I think they like... actually make a reference to that at all Missed opportunity. Either way, that was the that was a side point. The main point is, come on, that was that was all it took. I'm surprised they haven't been mugged in the last hundred years already. Like, come on. I mean, to be fair, or, only every one hundred years the phoenix rises, so it's not like you know. Yeah, but they still need the phoenix to be there when it's when it does rise, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I Although guess. Although I, I must say, yeah. I'm I'm also not entirely surprised that they they haven't been that they haven't had any robberies because that lighthouse keeper you know despite how old he is he is still pretty nimble like he has some action scenes of his own i must say and held up fairly well against five behemoths one with a jetpack carrying an, an evil egg <laughs> 
Evil leg. Yeah, those are some powerful odds to overcome. And he didn't win in the end, but he put up a good fight. Yeah. I just feel like the third act breakup kind of thing. I don't know. I just feel like it, it just doesn't work as well in this case. Like, oh yeah, Christ! This that did just that was just again. So it's full. personally just a trope I hate, where it's like uh, things are going well quickly. Like I mean, things are already kind of been terrible for the characters. I don't think the third act breakup needed necessarily happen in a plot to have a low point. Not to mention yeah, there are I a lot more there's... dramatic moments and low points coming up. So it's not even like you could say, "Oh man," but we need actual low point. Like it just seems like a third act breakup felt kind of weird. Yeah, I was... like I get what they're going for, but I just. I don't know, I didn't think it was necessary for the plot, you know? As soon as Maggie actually um, said, oh, well, is that, that was, well, your pop cop your pop cop would do, but he was, a, he was a real sheriff and you're not. So I was like, well, here we go. This is, uh, this, that's the kind of episode we're going to be in. I mean, and, at uh, least it only lasted an episode and wasn't dragged on for multiple episodes. I actually kind of prefer those third up breakouts when they do drag on for a bit longer. Well, well, A, when they have more build-up to it and have more just because and reason to exist, but, you know, when you don't have that, have them be around for longer so it's not just like, oh, you're hitting the box, like, we should have a third act breakup yeah, here. Yeah, but part of that is also I don't Dark like Tower. it as a trope, so I just find it to be a weak, you know, trope. I see, yeah, there's that, there's, there's that argument too. I feel like if you're going to do it do it well basically moral of the story don't do it if if it's <laughs> unnecessary i don't unnecessarily do it if it's necessary for a story that makes sense but if it's not necessary and you're like hmm, yeah because literally of nothing this. changes nothing changes by by adding it in this episode because regardless of whether they're angry with each other they still fight alongside each other they make up mid-fight but if they weren't fighting they just do the fight already that's you know that was yeah, it, it would I have mean, not personally, made how I would have rewrote this bit and have have Meggie be really messed up inside over it, you know, and maybe be sad about her or something like that, or just... I mean, on one hand, she is technically, I guess, messed up inside when you think about the cosmic clone. Yeah. Who's technically I mean, the voice of her inside. I mean, thing I didn't catch on first way. watch, but uh, I do know now I know a bit about more SMG4 lore and backstory and stuff, events that happen in SMG4. <laughs> Basically, one of Maggie's friends, or close friends, in the past ended up dying during the anime arc. And that kind of traumatized her. So that's what she was referencing multiple times. So, which, With that knowledge, it does make her being overprotective of Ori make a lot more sense. But I don't know, I just feel like a third, third act breakup, again, was unnecessary for this specific story. Yeah, I mean, you can't just tell the... That you understand still the only law enforcement on the island not to go after a bunch of criminals. That's not going to happen. In fact, you signed up to help him because you knew that you couldn't stop him in the first place. Yeah. Um, also, side note, I like how the children were voiced by um, Robin from Anime America, a.k.a. Theo's voice actor. She oh, yeah, we did. Have, did you mention last time that we had... Um, that we had um, the, the creators, uh, doing cameos. Oh, I don't doing... think I actually mentioned that yet, but they cameoed last time. Oh, well, there you go. See, we did forget to mention something in episode 6. I knew that was gonna be one of those. Yeah, so, but plot point-wise, I don't know. Again, I, besides that subplot, I thought the Benedict part of this episode, especially if we're set up for things later, um, you know, with Benedict and the Phoenix Egg, I don't know, this was good dramatic building of it, seeing him actually work towards his goal, you know? Yeah, he cuts the other question he needed. Although, you know, apart from him, you know the one person who had the most growth as a character in this episode? The Ice Cream Man. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> yeah he finally, I like Ice he Cream actually Man. He actually learned to appreciate Meggie and Ori, actually, after they save his life and he didn't even charge him for the ice cream, which, granted, was on the floor, so It whatever. was floor <laughs> ice cream with street toppings, guys. Just remember, street toppings aren't always bad. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, if there's one thing that we can tell about Bora Bora's and they live for 120 years is that they definitely have some good hygiene to go with that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. But yeah, uh, I thought, again, I think this episode is decent. Uh, I, I think there are definitely bad parts and cliches I don't personally like. 
But I mean, I'm like this again. I feel like this, like Sunset Paradise, at its worst, is just mildly mediocre, which isn't the worst a show could be. Like I've had shows like at their worst I've watched that genuinely infuriate me. Like me, like all right. So Jacob mm. could attest. We have watched stuff on YouTube that made me legitimately mad. Where I was like, why? Like, listen. Yeah, that's true. So, that, like, that, that like, was pending, like, listen. Uh, like, out of everything I watch, I prefer to watch episodes like this over stuff that genuinely infuriates me. I have seen some stuff, and it is tiring. It's just like, I hate it. Kill it. Yeah. Me. Although, yeah, it's interesting because that because the stuff that you're talking about that was an adaptation of a show that you like. In this instance, the the adaptation comes from, you know, comes from. Uh, well, it comes from a, a, a place of Nintendo origin, weirdly enough. But then again, they made this much more original here. And Emma just posted a video. What the heck? No wonder she's muted. <laughs> yeah, wait. She hasn't been talking to her review. Uh... <laughs> she just posted another video. What? <laughs> well, you Emily! Know what? She's what have you been doing? <laughs> she, she's still. I guess she's still going to be in the tags, though. So joke's on you if you get views, Nine I get views. has to meme. Okay. Sure, that sounds like a thing <laughs> oh, to come out right now, you know, a mere 20 minutes after your last upload. Alright, anyways, on to this. Uh, I thought the action scenes were good. I mean, you know, yeah. I feel like Glitch does action very well. I, I, I like, the, um, I like the, the, the comedy action when Benedict is having everyone do good deeds, actually. Yeah, no, those are Contrasting, great. of course, with the with the immediate um that we have upheaval of that after he comes back and like does what well, he does his announcement, where we actually see the funky force who are still supposed to be masquerading as the good guys, considering that the yeah, town is I now supposed to be Megan and Aubrey that's what going the around thing. Or hail the guy that has just threatened the entire town and revealed himself. Yeah, evil. I feel like they kind of revealed their true colors at this point. Shot. Let's be honest. I feel... I'm not too bothered by it. You, you know? think that? But Maggie said the town hates us. And yeah, then, because the they, because one that was before the Funky Force revealed themselves. Two that was also also after they die after they supposedly died. You know. And I they, mean, it was also was... it was also after um it was, it was also yeah, after well, the that... um the, the, one of them was seen saying let's boogie to the, the to a crime boss and then after then and leaving the scene in a lorry with where after an explosion went off which presumably killed the only law enforcement on the well, island. Oh yeah, but they were happy that Maggie and Ori was like, died. I feel like they were literally the happy about that. Style. They're like, you killed the murder, the mayor assassination. The assassination. Definitely likes their usual pizzazz. Someone's gonna put two and two together. <sighs> They're done. To be fair, the Boras are sheeple. You'd have imagined, Boras but yeah. Then again, sheeple. I wouldn't have guessed that a vacuum cleaner would have been able to save their lives, but it did. So yeah, that's fine. And, but again, remember that was literally. Oh. Yeah. Nor did I predict that the camera that Maggie had, you know, the whole point of Maggie staying on, like, getting her suitcase back in the first place at the beginning of the season would suddenly burst in flames. I mean, I, mean, I that, guess, yeah. Uh, that kind of gets brought back at the end of the season. Trust me. It, it, it goes somewhere. But okay, again, fine. I thought this episode was good. You know, I mean, you know, I, I like it. <laughs> I... Did not <laughs> entirely. Like I mean, I, I like again. I don't hate it. I mean, I, I will still watch this again. You know, just in, like if I just get some random spare time, I may turn it on. Like I mean, you know, it's a it's one of the weaker episodes. Not as weak in my opinion as episode five, but I don't like episode five that much. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and this is why I was like, well, I kind of do at times. But then again, I guess I spent most of that making like Mayor Kimby jokes. So yeah, be so, but yeah I overall, know. I thought this episode again was all right. It wasn't my favorite episode, but it was I, I mean, it is was my least favorite episode. General thoughts, it's Emily? One of my least favorites. Um. Oh yeah, Emily's back. Hi, say something. Yeah, hi. <laughs> You're supposed to be reviewing this with us, Emily. <laughs> Jeez. Fantastic. So, everyone, thank you. Uh, any, every, 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 you I have an opinion on it. 
What do you mean you don't have an opinion on it? We just watched it together. She I was know. so busy making Yan Patsumi that she didn't notice. Actually, there was half of, there was four screenshots actually, so. But well, also, I was more paying attention to the view. So well, I mean, I don't have an opinion on it. It's like, it's not like I don't hate it. I, I don't like it. I it, mean, fair. I. I mean, fair. Or, you know. Don't really know what to say about it. So yeah, hopefully, what comes next for Jacob's feelings on this series? Hopefully, it's good because if yeah, it's bad, I'll turn around this arc that is now starting. No, no, your character arc. You almost seems like a stagnant character. Your worst fear is coming true. No, I won't let it come true. Anyways, hope you enjoy this video. Subscribe to me. Watch Sunset Paradise. Subscribe, Jacob. Subscribe, to Emily, and yeah. Goodbye, guys. Thank you.